न्यूज फर्स्ट न्यूज लाइन प्राइम विद अराज शौकत अली एंड वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू यू दिस इज न्यूज लाइन प्राइम live and direct from the news first studios in Dorset Street in Clamber and it's a lovely wonderful magical evening out there today in this beautiful country that we call Sri Lanka and uh, this uh, today we welcome the appointment of the uh, latest uh, chief justice of the country many congratulations to uh, uh, Nalin Pereira and uh, we welcome him uh, to head the supreme court how wonderful is that now then uh, this evening we've got with us a former a senior advisor to the ministry of finance uh, to discuss finance what else and uh, he is right here in the studio with me mr malik kader good evening to you mr kader and thank you for being here good evening paras it's a pleasure now then here. let's get straight to the problem shall we what's happening to the exchange rate well the exchange rate has uh, from 160 it has done a turn huge turn right to 171 72 we don't know where it will end up at uh, but uh, for us looking at the exchange rates uh, well we are not alone where the exchange rates are concerned yeah. you always will have to compare the rates with uh, the region and similar countries like sri lanka mm. if one is to analyze why this whole thing happened well when the us economy is getting stronger as they say Uh, and with the increase interest rates uh, generally what happens is from emerging countries mm. money's get pulled out and get invested in a more secure or a stronger economy like the us so federal reserve is keeping on increasing the interest rates so what happens is uh, these foreign funds start selling particularly in markets they sell assets and money there's a flow going out so, so uh, out of uh, so what you're saying is along with the the gap uh, the, as the us interest rates grow goes up the gap between that offered in the us and what is offered here in say our markets here yeah. uh, has got tightened uh, tighten and i mean those things are adjusted with the inflation and all that kind of rates available and what happens is they 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 feel more comfortable investing money in us so that's right. why money is gradually flowing out of the economies not only sri lanka even in india even in some of the other countries in the region right. even from europe money or even from south america money is moving out and that's why you find the interest rates uh, not the interest rates the exchange rates uh, some call it plummeting but well we have to live with it well the, uh, the point is that some people say look you can't compare it with india for example because uh the indian economy is not so dependent on uh, imports like we are and uh, they they do a vast uh, amount of exports and so they are able to uh, to ride the storm if you like better than anyway certainly better than we can is that is that a bit of a fair comment that is a fair comment to say because what happens is uh, for us looking at our economy we have tons and loads of problems yeah. right to face with yeah in addition to money flowing out of the country yeah. so with all those things yeah. right one won't be surprised to see this exchange rate going out up uh, so um what about turkey then for us turkey is a different kettle of fish turkey is perhaps the 17th largest economy in the world right right well if i remember right uh, the uh, exchange rate it plummeted down to about 40% it depreciated to about 40% but it recovered right because uh, the country is in a slightly better situation than our economies and uh, you see in the country they they start selling dollars and they brought dollars back into the system and then they managed it that way <coughs> sorry um so where will it end uh well we'll have to see what pressure us is going to have on uh, the dollar and the exchange rate in the federal reserve based on that we'll have to make a call on uh, the exchange rate now, or else the exchange rate currently is a free float it'll 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 go where it should go where will it end uh, 
it, it's, it's, it's a tough call. It's already at about 170, but uh, it can it can move a little up and maybe perhaps it can stabilize because I think there are there are certain measures that have been uh, taken uh, to rectify situations like that. Sorry, um, do uh, you see on top of that? On top of that, for us, what we need to understand is, um, unfortunately, uh, economy is uh, not in the best of the health it should be. And uh, I would like to take a very hypothetical situation. For us, take for instance, you, uh, your earning is 100 rupees. Right. Okay. Your spending is 95 rupees. I'm saying so because recently a deputy minister at one of the forums mentioned so, right, because if your, if your income is 100, right, your expenditure <coughs> is 75. Right. Now you have to eat and drink with 5 rupees. I'm just giving a hypothetical example, not necessarily 5 rupees, but okay, uh, a token of 5, right? Yeah. How do you exist? Right, you have a luxurious life. Right? You need your Benz cars, right? You have all that kind of stuff. But even if you did, and, what, about, what about the common man? Who yeah, so the, the common man. So what happens is, I, I'm talking about in general, yeah. right? So with these five rupees. So what you have to do is, either you have to increase your income, right? right? Or cut down on expenditure. Well, what, well, how's when you cut down on, how's our savings? Doing? So, so when you cut down on expenditure, yeah. that is what I think the current, basically, you, you're, you're facing. Right, so you're tightening your tightening tightening the belt. Right, right at the moment. Right, unfortunately, our people are not used to that. Right, they would want to have money in the pocket, and they would want to have uh, a plate of rice, right, on their table. Right, so whether we like it or not, maybe I don't know whose mistake it is. Right, our expenditure has gone on, and and on 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 top of that, for us, yeah. our expenditure I mentioned to you was 95 rupees. Yeah, with the earning of 100 that some of those expenditure is recurring and unfortunate because what happens is you have gone and put an airstrip at the back of your house you have put a port at the back of your house that is not generating income i'm just giving you an example there can right. be many more things like that right those are not fruitful so these these sort of vanity projects that's uh, right like are not like bringing immediate risk not that we don't need them yeah perhaps this is not the hour for us we have not done a forward projection on these things. We have simply gone and... And so we haven't had the luxury of building these things now for use later. That's the thing, yes. So, so we, but we are paying for them right now. Right. That's not generating any income for us. Right. So we have to pay for it. So that is what we are doing right now. And that's, that's what this whole thing is all about. Yeah. We, I mean, all these things added <coughs> together would come to that. But would you say that the depreciation the currency is a sign of a collapsing economy or one sign of um, I wouldn't want to say that for us because what happens is that it is a huge incentive for exports right. I think we have to we are incentivizing the uh, exports now that will increase but, our income yes but uh, that's only on the one side of the story we are so import dependent that um, we spend an awful lot of money. The cost, the cost of the goods that we export will naturally rise. Uh, for us, the thing is this, you have to start somewhere, right? So that is why our imports, right, currently we can see there is a certain amount of curtailment happening yeah. in the imports. Yeah. And uh, one of the things which we can't see at the moment is to incentivize exporters, right? You need to give them a little more I mean, uh, incentives yeah. for them to grow yeah. and grow their business because that is key to this whole thing. And one more thing for us, we also need to get a lot of foreign investment coming into this country. So here we go. Thank you very much for sending us your um, SMS questions. And it's on 0772 300 305. And we've already got some coming in here. Uh, and uh, let, let's take this. We are a bit tired of this. Please, let, please allow people to live happily in their short life. Depreciation is poor fiscal management. Yes, it is poor fiscal management, but then uh, we have been pushed towards it. Not that, not that, uh, not that I think uh, the administration wants us to do it, yeah. but uh, there's no way out.
it there's no happen. way out. Yes, it, it has happened and it will, hap will happen if we don't have uh, proper, uh, proper control. All right, now that they've done, uh, they've de they've done the, the mistake, how do we get out of it? Is it export, 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 export? Uh, not only exports. We'll, we, we will need to, at some stage, whether we like it or not for us, we will have to, well, tighten our belts. belts. But we don't like... We, we don't I mean, like. definitely, I mean, the question is, this, this person who asked this question, what have I done, right, to tighten my belts? Well, uh, see, <laughs> during the war and so on, the, the public who couldn't... Uh, go and fight the war themselves uh, were quite happy to support uh, the movement by tightening their belts and they, they thought well we, this is our bit to the war effort. But now there is no such thing. Yeah, but we were promised freedom, yeah, we were promised a level playing field and we were promised a uh, corruption free society. Surely, surely, surely if we took into and if we reined in all the monies that has been spirited away thanks to corruption, then don't you think we'd be in a different uh, wicket altogether? Certainly, yes. If all what you said didn't happen, we would have been on a certainly different wicket. Right. Unfortunately, all those things which we just mentioned have happened. Right? There's corruption There, down there the is line. this matter of, um, wasn't the summer thing mentioned it a couple of days ago in a press conference, uh, 20 million plus dollars, US dollars, 20 million plus, I think the figure is about 26 million, uh, found in an account in, in Hong Kong. Now I did, I did the sums. You, we should be able to, if, if that money had been here and within the government system, that amount of money could have built over 2,500 homes. Quite right. I mean, there, there, there is, if you ask me, that is just one incident. There might be tons of other investment incidents like that which has happened. If all that money was pulled into the country, yeah. I, I'm sure a situation like this, we, we could have avoided a situation like this. I mean, at the moment, we, we're uh, having the Sri Lankan Airlines Commission going on. And uh, they're talking about all these other uh, bits and pieces that happened in the past. But they're not getting to the, uh, to the crunch, which is what happened in the most recent past when they cancelled the orders for the aircraft, cancelled lease agreements, transferred monies to an orphan uh, trust and uh, in, in settlement of these cancellations. And it's, it, it runs into hundreds of millions of rupees. I mean, uh, I think there was 150 million US dollars on, on one of them. Uh, this is completely a crazy situation where our money is just being squandered instead of doing something better than that. Quite right for us. I mean, uh, one of, I mean, a few individuals will get together and according to them will make an informed decision to, to take this very drastic and may, perhaps nasty <laughs> decisions which is going to cost the country a lot of money. I think you're, uh, uh, you're spot on in some of those things. What about, uh, <clears throat> what about what role does debt management and good governance, where do they meet? For us, uh, we're talking about governance, that's, that's, a, that's a very good question. I think uh, three or four years ago, I think everyone got together on the road and wanted good governance and we voted for good governance. Yeah. Um, we didn't vote a bunch of people in to come and rob the central bank, no, yes. Mr. Carter. For us, uh, the issue where governance is concerned, I think there is a huge misperception mis where governance is concerned. Governance is something which cannot be repaired, right, in about two or three years or one year or six months. Yes. Right? Governance, governance, you cannot have a set of rules, right, and ask people to fall in line where governance is concerned. Yeah. Right? Governance, they say, no amount of rules and regulations can, can and will you make a crooked man straight. No amount of rules and regulations will make a crooked man straight for us. But right? we can't let him carry on. No, the thing is this. This, basically, a man who is crooked is crooked, right? So, unfortunately, unfortunately, it is the next generation that will have to bail us out. It's the next generation. It's a, it's a very long call. Right? We have to start. We have to start at the education level. 
we have to inculcate a lot of values right in the youth of this country without doing that there is no hope where governance is concerned right you 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 appoint you elect the same set of people yeah. right with a different agenda coming in so this lot unfortunately will have to get out of this whole system it will take about 10 15 years we need to get a new breed a new young, breed young people breed. coming in with value systems integrity honesty at the back of their mind but where is honor honor has gone out of the window it's been thrown out it's been thrown out forcibly, <laughs> forcibly. along with the bath water <laughs> correct yes but you know if we examine uh south korea for example um four presidents four presidents have received convictions and have been jailed a couple of them got pardons later on but they got convictions and they were jailed the the most recent one being uh, a few days ago when uh, he was given a 15 year term uh, for his part in uh, corruption and so on uh, and tax evasion and whatever now South that's, Korea that's is it. Asia's fourth largest economy, the 11th largest in the world. Now, in between their economic prosperity, their independence got pretty strong. Uh, the independence of the judiciary got pretty strong. And that is why they've been able to uh, practice democracy and send their former presidents to jail. That's not all, Mr. Carter. Leading businessmen of top corporates, worldwide, uh, worldwide acclaimed, big companies. big companies, their top brass have also been jailed. Innovators of high-rise buildings, chairman of those companies, inside, behind bars, daughters, sons, behind bars. Do you think that Sri Lanka's judiciary will ever be that strong and that independent to jail our leaders if they've done any wrong. For us, uh, I, I wouldn't want to talk about the judiciary because what happens is that's a very, no. very sensitive area to get into. <coughs> but talking about uh, Korea, you just mentioned South Korea. <coughs> I, I think they are in the right direction of good governance. Right direction of good governance. I think countries in the third world countries, right, will have to take a cue from that. But having said that, for us, overnight, overnight, our environment is such that I don't know whether, whether, whether our environment will permit them to do so. Now then, thank you very much for your um, SMS messages, se several here. I I'll just take one here, shall I? Half-educated brats make people to ruin this country all are responsible, no economic theories are working other than nepotism. And we can see that in, in the way that the, the game of politics is played. Mr. Carter, there are people who have been affected by floods. We have had no statements from these people. Instead, what we hear and, and see in the paper, read in the papers, see on our television, hear on radio, is all this chicanery, political chicanery going on. They're doing this not for, surely they're not doing it for the benefit of the people, they're doing it for their own personal benefit. Political for their, gain. For political gain, for survival. The survival of the fittest is limited to those 225 out there. Correct. For us, you just mentioned about nepotism, I think. Uh, yes, very, one, of, one, well, one of our viewers. Yeah, yes. One of our viewers just mentioned uh, it in a proper and a, uh, in a very nice manner. Now, I am 75 after being educated and living a frugal life of mistakes made by half-educated brats of this country. Correct. I mean, he's paying a compliment saying half-educated. Are they completely... <laughs> right, fine. No, what I'm trying to say is we're talking about nepotism, but who, who, who elects them? Who elects them with huge majorities right into parliament?
So we need to take a call. The 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 the, the, the public of this country. Yes, but will we have need to make we need a, a whole we need a wholesale revision of the system because, as you know, that the parties continue to put forward serve on a platter the same old names, the same old names, and the Sri Lankan people are quite myopic. Today's murderers and today's robbers are tomorrow's leaders and all is forgiven. For heaven's sake, uh, Mr. Carter, let me ask you, you worked uh, at the, as a senior advisor Minister of Finance, but today we have a Minister of Finance who come, turns up at a press conference and then says that he doesn't understand the fuel formula, the adjustment formula. And he has the goal to say to other journalists that, look, if I disclose it, it'll only confuse you more. In which other country will people take it? Do you think that the Minister of Finance in Singapore or Thailand or Malaysia or Australia or Korea or wherever else can get away with making a statement like that? He'll be back home in a jiffy. Yeah. But in this country, we just take it and we laugh. Why is that? What's the culture about? Right, it's a it's 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 a level of literacy also uh, for us in terms of uh, uh, I, I'm not blaming, literacy. I, I, we, I, I, our I, literacy is eighty nine percent for heaven's sake. No, on matters like this, in fact, if you say that the journalist basically took it with a laugh, that is not uh, that. It is, is not, not only the journalist; yeah. it's the people in the country. Know, yeah. They they just say, "Oh, we are really," and and get on with it. But they should. Have, they could have. They could have worked it out. What the formula is. Unfortunately, there. Excuse me. There is no, the minister of finance is not some authority to decide whether the journalists and the public at large are because the journalists are in a way the representatives of the people. Public, yes. Right. And the, who is he to say? You know, it'll only confuse you more. Is he saying that it is even he is confused? It reminded he, me, his statement that day, reminded me of Ranu Wickremesinghe on the 17th of March 2015, when he turned up to Parliament saying that he wanted to make a special statement, put his hands in his pocket, turned around, looked at everybody in Parliament in the House and said, does anybody know about bonds? Mm. Well, clearly he didn't, mm. because today we know the result. But why is it that we take it. Why can't we fight back? Well, I think it's it's up to the journalists to uh, basically make a call and fight back. If you oh, we do, we, we do all I right. I think you're doing it. Uh, you're doing it in. in I, I have seen some of the uh, newspapers and some of the television channels, well, arguing and fighting it out. And until you get your formula done, yeah, you should do it. Well. Uh, here you go. There are so many questions here. Oh, I don't know. We'll take this one, shall we? When are we going to reach an egalitarian society? It's well, for us, well, going back to my question on governance, well, yeah. unfortunately, we'll have to wait for the next generation. We will have to wait. It's a, it's a, it's a 10 to 15 year wait. If you want this in the next uh, four or five years, it's not going to happen because what happens is we, we, I mean, the current lot, as I told you, no amount of rules and regulations. You're going to make a crooked man straight. A crooked man is crooked. Right? So you have to eliminate that lot. And to eliminate that lot, you'll have to give it time. And then wait for the next breed. And even the next breed, you will have to plant that seed right now in the education system. If you don't do that, we will continue with the same read. But we are only well. spending around six, I think they promised six percent uh, for education. That's not enough. That's not, that's not, I don't know. Singapore, that's during a certain period of time, Singapore spent 28 percent of GDP on education. Well, they have invested their money. They invested Why their that money. Right? They have invested their money where it sh the money should go. For instance, take Japan. If you, have, if you have noticed the Japanese education system, from grade one to about four, they don't teach students. They say mannerism before education. Right? One to four, they inculcate values. Values in the children. Right? What are the values? Values is respect, honesty, 
integrity, all those things are fed into the child. So when the child is molded, now that is the age where you're making them, right? After that, they get into teaching. And then you have a society who is humble, who has honesty, who has integrity, who has respect for the other, which unfortunately we don't have. And some of those people hopefully will end up in parliament. Yes, quite right. For instance, even now you go get into a bus, right? You take a, unfortunately you take a small child, right? Seven or eight years or ten years. There's a pregnant lady standing. Do you think they will give the seat? They are not taught. They don't know what values are. When we went to school, we had it. Unfortunately, it's not there right now. Something happened along the way. It, it happened along the way, right? All those values have eroded. Uh, another question. Thank you for uh, coming up with this. The corrupt elder politicians bring their offspring to carry on the good work. Correct. The it, name. The name has to... So that's, that's, that's nepotism. Yes, that's nepotism, yes. So, Marikade, you, you've observed everything. The, the stock market is uh, uh, doing atrociously. It's, yes, it's yes. very quiet. I think it's There not are quiet, brokers yes. going out of business. Quite right, yes. Uh, and uh, some brokers just can't afford to pay the additional uh, deposit that they're required now. Um, the SEC didn't do much. Yes in all this time. It's nearly four years. They promised us uh, to investigate uh, 12 files. Nothing Nothing's happened. happened. Nothing happened. Pumping and dumping is uh, uh, forgotten by most, excepting by us. Right. Um, yeah. We, we haven't forgotten. Yes. Right? So what's happening? What, have we wasted four years? I think we have wasted a lot of time. For us, uh, the indexes have dropped beyond 6,000. Yeah. Right. The daily turnover was 100, 200 million. Right. Yeah. Of course, take into consideration interest rate regime moving up to about 14, 15 percent. Yes. Right. You cannot expect people to come and invest money in the market. Right. Because you get a risk free investment in uh, fixed deposits. Having said that, Farah, yeah. I must also tell you the market right now looks very interesting. Exciting because some of the counters, the PE levels are unbelievable. But, it looks very attractive. Yes, but unfortunately, we don't have that category of literate, literate investors right getting into the market. Unfortunately, a it's bad a, word is EPF and things. Yeah. Right? Ideally, at times like this, yeah. they have to pick up bargains. The big funds must come and pick up bargains. We but the big, but the big funds, the, the captive funds have had their fingers burnt. No, they have fingers burnt, right? Because they, they invested at the, the wrong top. time. Yes, right? but, but they now, bought at the top of the market. Now, for instance, a hundred rupee share, I won't mention names, yeah. is about 20 rupees. Yeah. Right? For us, isn't it? I mean, if you do your proper valuations, right? This is a good long-term investment. Unfortunately, no one at the moment but is But we haven't got touching. the money to invest. Uh, I think there are the, the funds the, which have money. Yes, but right? I'm talking about the common man. Yeah, common man. Joe uh, Public, where's the money? They're struggling to meet uh, ends meet. They well, tighten their belt so much that they're all going to walk around like sort of um, um, little ghosts. Okay. What happens for us? Common man, their, their, their participation in the market in comparison to the big funds are, are very limited. Right? If yeah. you take a percentage, yeah. I'll not be able to tell you a percentage now, but, but it is ignorant right. compared to the normal man buying 1,000, 2,000 shares. Yeah. It's, 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 the, it's, it's a big fellow, right. right? The big funds who basically will control and will command the, the situation in the market. Now, right. ideally, we should be seeing them, big funds, coming into the market now and picking up bargains because there are a lot of bargains in the market at this moment of time. Hmm. And looking at a two to three year horizon, I don't know, I'm not an analyst, but I feel, my gut feeling is that, uh, well, there'll be good returns. Well, I hope so. Uh, the Sri Lankan cricketers are at it. Let's hope and wish, uh, let's hope for the best. Wish them all the very best because uh, these investigations and so on uh, come at the wrong time. They, uh, sometimes I think that they're designed to put our players off. But our boys uh, know better. They know. probably do well. In fact, for recently there was a, a talk given by former Sri Lankan test captain, Bambulu Varnapura. Indeed. And yes. uh, Mr. Varnapura, 
uh, will be uh, the, the Mandela Varnapur, of course, the first man to, to face the first ball, bolt, and to score the first run for Test cricket in Sri Lanka. And he'll be my guest on Monday morning at 7 a.m. live on Newsline. Uh, and uh, on that uh, happy note, um, Malik Khadet, thank you very much for being on oh, Newsline Prime. It's a, it's a pleasure being on the program. And that's the way it was on Newsline Prime. Take care, have a great night, and God bless. News First, Newsline Prime with Araz Shaukatali.